under the theme Coffee, Women Breaking Barriers to the Next Frontier. Panelists include Ms. Tiopista Nakungu, Chief Coordinator, International Women's Coffee Alliance Uganda Chapter, Richard Senoga, Founder and Managing Director, Vanuatu Associates, and Board Member, IWCA Uganda Chapter, Mrs. Martha Wandera, Managing Director, Kimco Coffee, and Member, IWCA Uganda Chapter. The talk show is organized by International Women's Coffee Alliance Uganda Chapter with support from Urgent Action Fund. Dear viewers, good evening and welcome to the show. Um, it's the practical business tips, you know, to, um, I need to add and emphasize business. I am Charles Board, your host, and as usual, we are joined with our business coach, Charles, you're most welcome to the show. Thank you so much and always happy to be here. Very good. We have a special guest for you today as well, and um, I won't delay this. Uh, we have Jackie all the way from Tungamo. Jackie. You're most welcome to the show. You can introduce yourself to the audience. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. I'm so grateful to be part of this panel. Very good. That's Jackie Twangire from uh, Ruhama in Intongamo district. She's going to be telling us her story. Um, of course, as usual, our focus and our interest is to share with you practical business tips. You can call them um, uh, lessons. It is counsel. It's a combination, Charles. It's a it cocktail is. of, uh, you know, the practical uh, issues or aspects that are very important for you to build that business, sustain it, and grow it. Now, today, our topic is um, practical business tips and lessons from a lady. Like I said, we want to keep it as practical as possible, so we listen from the people that are doing it. From a lady who used her vocational skills to create a garment factory and a vocational Institute. Um, of course, we know um, in Uganda, vocational training is something that many of us probably will look down mm. upon. Yeah, mm. sure. And um, if you notice, if it is, if you're looking at candidates or students in school, yes, normally those who fail to score certain yes. marks are the oh, ones yes. that are driven into that space. Very true. Yes. And yet we all agree that the other form of education, yes, it's important. But it, the market seems to be saturated with those. Mm. And there are areas where we need a lot of skills and the demand is there. Talk about plumbers, talk about mechanics, talk about Cobblers. tailoring and that kind of thing. So Correct. that's what we're, we're going to be unpacking. You could be out there, seated at home. Probably this could be an opportunity for you to take or look into vocation. Probably we need to unmask that word, Charles. It will help us Very unmask true. the vocational Very true. Uh, you know, uh, concept Correct. so Correct. that our people get to know it a little better. Very now, true. without any further ado, Charles, um, yeah. what intrigued you this week? This week was interesting because we had uh, some outcomes of the elections uh, yes. coming out. Yes. And the kind of heat and energy that surrounded those elections and how everybody thought there was only one way to make income, yeah. which was become a member of parliament, mm -hmm. or become a mayor, or become a LOC5. Mm -hmm. It speaks volumes about the way we are looking at our country. Yeah. And the moment we begin to reduce opportunities in this country to just those very, very few positions in parliament, mm -hmm. LOC5 are the districts, mayors in a few cities, we are in trouble. I hear you. And I feel that's why these Sunday sessions are such a vital element of our conversation. Mm -hmm. If we do not do that, the young man will finish university and the next thing is, I want to stand for the next district. Create it for me. Yeah. If it is not there, please, we are going to demonstrate. Create for me a district. Mm. I want to go to parliament and earn my salary. Mm. And that one who is already there is saying, don't come and disrupt me. I've been here 15 years. I'm here to be here. Don't disturb me. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I thought the country needed to have picked a few lessons. I know there were lessons related to elections or mm. conducting an election. Mm. The bigger picture was how come everybody is almost saying, 
getting that political post is the A to Z of my life. Mm, the silver I bullet. Need to, we need to change that narrative. I hear you. And that's yeah. why we are here in a way. That's why we're sharing these practical skills. That's true. You know, and it's quite interesting <coughs> because I'm sure the market was saturated with motivational speakers. Yes. You know, and, mm. uh, you know, people who come and talk good about how easy it is to start a business. Yes. Go and catch it. You yes. Chase your dream. Yes. And that kind of thing. Yes. Now, when we hear from people who are doing business. Yeah. And, of course, you who has mentored quite a number of people mm. in that space. Mm. I think it, it puts us in a different... Um, kind of uh, uh, positioning. Yes, um, without any further ado, Charles, um, last week we had a very, very interesting business experience. Yeah. From a gentleman who couldn't express himself in English. That's very true. And what that means is uh, he was a man of modest education. Very true. But has managed to transform his life into yes. a billionaire. Very doing true. business right at the grassroots. Correct. Yes, but I don't want to preempt that. Uh, yeah. For the viewers who missed that lesson, yeah. give us a digest of what uh, came out of that discussion from where uh, you sit. Charles, thank you so much because um, these Sunday afternoons are your lifetime opportunity to learn some of the things you'll never pick from a textbook. Mm -hmm. What we had last week was extremely, extremely fulfilling in many ways. Mm. Fulfilling in that Wherever you are located, you can become a billionaire. Yeah. Whatever level of education that you have attained, don't curse anybody. But doesn't mean don't take your children to school. Mm. Mm. Just know that wherever you are and whatever the level of education, you are ready for success in this world. And I want to summarize the way I normally do. I normally call what I call the headline learnings from such a story of Esau. Yeah. Esau had the following headline learnings. One of them was that, in the beginning, mm. engage in the type and the size of a business which is within your available resources and you understand it. The available resources Esau had in the beginning when he came to the city of Kampala was just his energy yeah. and his brother to put him in some small ca kind of a slum somewhere and sleep. Mm. Mm. In the morning, wake up and push a wheelbarrow. But as you do that, try and make your earnings. Yeah. But start with what you can manage and what you can do. So he did that and continued doing it. And later you'll see how that beginning was transformed to something big when entrepreneurship came in. Number two was that every micro-entrepreneur has a potential to become a multi-billion business owner yeah. during his or her own lifetime. The differentiator here is the business mindset. And nobody who is watching this program does not have a mindset. And it is that mindset that really is critical in moving from a micro-entrepreneur to a billionaire. The issues that this man did mm. and the issues that Enterprise Uganda did for this SAO man and things changed. Number three is that a well-structured and delivered entrepreneurship skills program is easily understood no matter the language of delivery. Mm. In other words, if you are teaching entrepreneurship and uh, there are roadblocks that seem to be blocking somebody from getting started, you have something about the structuring and the packaging of that program. Otherwise, if it is delivered the way we did and the way ESA understood, it is something that anybody can understand and run away with. So on that note, I just want to invite the viewers to come and make sure that these Sunday afternoons are your special afternoons. To pick the kind of lessons that you'll never find in any textbook in this continent, anywhere, but you pick from people who have walked the game. And I think and that is very important, Charles. Sorry. Yes. Um, we get so many people asking, I mm. have so much money. Yes. How do I, where can I invest it? Yes. I want to go into business. Yeah. How do I start a business? Yeah. Now, viewers, um, the principles that are shared here can actually be translated and apply. Yes. In different sectors. And um, I, when you say that, um, yeah. it's time for learning and picking critical lessons. Correct. I'm sure some of us viewers who are asking some of those questions, please pay attention. You'll pick uh, quite a lot from this engagement. And just speaking from the statement you've made, Charles, mm. When we say, please pick lessons from here, ignore your paper qualifications that you have. 
as a person viewing this program. Mm -hmm. You may, have, may even be a lecturer on entrepreneurship or in finance. Don't mind. Listen to this program and pick the practical steps people have taken yeah. to become who they are. Yeah. And we have endeavored to make sure that from the portfolio of Enterprise Uganda, we pick as many testimony givers as we can. Next week, we shall be going to Busoga, deep, not even in Jinja, deep in the village, and you will see the story. Mm. Amazing. But uh, maybe quickly, let me summarize the mm. lessons from Esau. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that we could see from the story of Esau is that many people end up running micro businesses because they think their background determined their destiny and they are supposed to remain there. There are many who, like Esau, are still doing the micro enterprise up to now. And they were probably more educated than Esau. Probably had more resources than Esau. But they have remained tiny because they thought that was their destiny. Esau stopped in primary five. You could call him semi-literate. And was content running his wheelbarrow business. Mm. There are many of us who are doing that right now. But later, as you, as you will hear from what I'll be saying, that was the take off point. If you got a proper nurturing program, that take off point need not become your destiny. And I want that to be very clearly understood. If you have seen somebody who has been micro for five years, ten years, kindly, as soon as we open the country, knock the doors of Enterprise Uganda, let us get that person to begin to move like Esau did. The other thing that I learned was that. Um, entrepreneurship skills and business mindset, which I talked about earlier on, yeah. are transferable. Yeah. You can transfer the skills for business, the skills for entrepreneurship, if you do it properly. Mm. Esa, when he heard about the training in Intungamo, that was organized under the auspices of Umama Janet, who was then the member of parliament for Ruhama, when he had the announcement on radio, he said, even me, or primary five, to go and listen to such a program, I don't know English. Mm. Then they told him, no, no, you just come, because at the end of the day, after five days, we shall give you a certificate. To him, that was the motivator. Yeah. I missed out the certificate of P7, senior four. Now I'm going to get a certificate from Enterprise Uganda, a Kampala company. Mm. He came on the basis of just that kind of a thing. Yeah. But let us see, when he came in, these are the key learnings. Key learnings that Esau picked, which are fundamental for anybody who wants to go and do business with the following. And we delivered these key learnings in a manner that was so practical, that was so basic, that was within reach of anybody. Mm. Three things that we shared that defined how to take off in business. The first one we said, Shara Omuguha, which means remove all the excuses. Mm. I'm not educated. Nobody knows me. I'm deep into Ruhama. How can I be like anybody who is near a Kampala? You know, I don't even have land. My parents are poor. So the first thing in the training that we did was to say, please, if you want the game of entrepreneurship to transform you, cut out all excuses. And we put it in the local language. Shara omuguha. So these are the kind of things that, the third thing that is mentioned was, Maliriza Gumizamu, key component of the training. In other words, set a goal, complete it, set another one, complete mm. it, set another one. And Esau began to do that, and he did an amazing job, as you'll later see as I make my summary here. The other thing was that we introduced in the training, which was practical, was we used the local bird known to Esau, mm. the local chicken. In mm -hmm. Inyankole. Mm. Inkoko Inyankole. He now knew that Inkoko Inyankole is independent. That's not to wait for anybody. Even to treat itself, it goes and looks for some hubs within the compound. And he said, if Inkoko Inyankole can do it, why can't I do it? Yeah. In other words, what I was dri driving at here is for all of us who are watching this program every Sunday to know that in our midst now, we have an institution of repute. An institution that is building entrepreneurs of all levels, starting from micro to billionaires. The other thing that came out of a South story is that opportunities to do business, to make money, are everywhere, wherever you are. But you need to first start with one and try to become as good as you can in that one. 
Esa who first mastered the Duka game and made this Duka game become his identity. On the basis of the Duka game, he saw an opportunity to buy a bakery. Yeah. And he bought it. Yeah. And they were the ones inviting him as oh, please, it is you who is a little bit okay here. Come and buy a bakery. He didn't have skills for baking. But he bought a bakery with experts and he continued the bakery. And as that one was happening, he saw the need to go into milling. Initially milling for his own employees. Then later, he started milling for the entire region of Western Uganda. Later, he went into banana farming. Mm. Bought 15 acres, then another 15. Later, he had 50 acres. He didn't have any. Of the 50 now, 30 are planted with bananas. That's big. It is. He also went into fish farming, coffee farming, selling of sand, and serving the entire 10 districts in Western Uganda. And this man began by just mastering the game of running a doka. Mm. And then from a doka, they were pointing at him, please come and do this, come and do this, come and do this, come and do this. And he took off. Singleness of purpose. Exactly. We didn't spread ourselves thinly at the beginning sometimes. Exactly. Mm. Master a game until you are known for something. Mm. They knew that there was this man at the corner here who was doing so well. If you want to sell that bakery, please you talk to Esau. Yeah. They went on talking and knocking the door of Esau. Esau, please take this bakery. Mm. The workers are good. Please take this bakery. The man today has got several trucks. The man is delivering trucks of bananas to Kampala. The other last point that I thought was a very interesting thing when you are faced with such a massive success was that learn to separate yourself from this enterprise. Mm. Because the moment we begin to see you as such a great store of success, you get yourself mixed up in such a way that you want to prove to the community that, you know what, you laughed at me that because I stopped in primary five. Look at who I am. I own three lorries. Do you see that banana plantation there? It is mine. Mm. And the big moment you begin to intertwine yourself with the enterprise, the destiny will begin to become blood. Mm. So what did he do specifically, for example? In this chair, in this studio, he said today he has hired a degree holder and a diplo diploma holder as his manager. He stopped in primary five. He interviewed somebody with a degree mm. to confirm that he can be his manager. Because the he fellow, knew what he wanted. Yes, yes, and that fellow had to pass his interviews. Mm. In addition to that, in trying to professionalize the running of his operations, he has had to appoint a board of trustees to guide him on strategic and management issues. That was powerful, Charles. The translator who came here mm. was the chairman of the board of trustees. Mm. But he had to be appointed by Esau. Mm. Please come, guide me. You could remove Esau and put the name Mulwana there. Mm -hmm. Similar story. Absolutely. Similar story. So I want people to know that when you begin to listen to these afternoon stories here, you now begin to know that there are many, many Mulwana baby steps in this country. Mm -hmm. And they all begin with transforming the business mindset. So I want to conclude by saying this man had a vision, despite what he has see, already achieved. He said, in 10 years' time, not only should I be owning the three lorries I currently have, there should be 10. I should be having a modern bakery. Right now, his bakery is having a very basic setup, but it's producing the bread. Mm. His maize meal, his basic setup, is serving the entire Western region. He wants those modernized. He wants the 50 acres of bananas to be all planted and ready and harvesting. And he wants his coffee plantation equally to be fully developed and serving the market. Very powerful lessons mm. there. Thank you very much, Charles. Yeah. And I'm sure from that distillation, you must have picked a point or two. Um, if you're nursing ambitions of joining business. And the beauty with this is that Esau's wings are spread in different spaces. Yes. So one can actually, I mean, you can fall in any of those. But like Charles yeah. said, yeah. singleness of purpose is very important at the beginning. Very, the very dynamics true. Yes. of Duka are the things that Esau <laughs> mastered. <laughs> very true. And it propelled him into all these other spaces. Yeah. Jackie, yeah. um, I'm sure our viewers are dying to listen to your story. Um, again, I have to introduce Jackie again for those who are joining us now. Jackie owns a garments factory and a vocational training institute. Um, she's from Ntungamo, Rohama, and uh, she's here to share her experience, how she has been able to make it. And for you who have questions on how you can start a business, how you can sustain it, how you can grow it, 
this is your chance to pick key learnings and lessons from Jackie's experience. Jackie, I know I've given a little introduction, but I want to ask again, uh, who is Jackie? I want Waisei can say I know <laughs> Jackie. Well, thank you, Charles. I'm Jackie Tuonjirwe, born from a family of 36. In our mother's line, we are five. Okay. I'm the fourth born. So the privilege of uh, school was a little bit challenging. Okay. And so I grew up from outside home. Wherever there would be opportunity of going to school, I would find a home. Mm -hmm. So in the long run, I did not uh, uh, acquire desired education. I am this young girl who mm -hmm. expected to become a doctor or an engineer because I was bright. But then there were few chances. So eventually I came to Kampala following my elder sister, who then had stayed in Kampala for some time. And um, unfortunately, she got sick. And uh, she kept on deteriorating, and eventually she rested. Sorry. So, um, but before she died, she realized she could not take me far, as far as education is concerned. So she proposed that I go for vocational training. Mm -hmm. The first time she told me, I could not say no, I could not say yes, but silence <laughs> <laughs> revealed it all. Yes. <laughs> and uh, the next time she asked me, I told her, I think you would rather take me back home. <laughs> she left me there. She didn't take me back home. She didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And um, later, a relative, uh, sh I think she talked to this relative, her cousin. And so um, my cousin was like, you know what, Jackie? What are you doing in Kampala? You're not studying. You're not working. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. I told her, I asked my sister to take me back home, but she has not told Acted me. upon it. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> so um, I had to think twice. And she advised me. She said, by the way, you can do... You can go for baking if you want to bake. You can go for secretarial. You can go for tailoring. Choose among those vocational skills. Mm. I was like, well, I don't see any of, the, of those. And then somehow, I again stayed for some weeks. I was idle. I'm not a housemaid. I'm, not, uh, I'm just there. So eventually, I made up my mind to join a vocational institute mm. uh, where I excelled very well. She counseled me and I, I settled. I settled and joined the Vocational Institute and um, I excelled very well. Mm. But still, I was passionate about what I wanted to be. Mm. So I did not go for tailoring. She bought a sewing machine at home. Uh, then I had a friend. I would make friends. I admired friends who are doing well in life. Mm. And there was this... Um, hospital administrator who was a Swedish. So I, she came to the workshop where I was doing industrial training from, and we became friends. Mm. And somehow, because I wanted to run away from tailoring, so I kept close to her until she offered me a job okay. at the hospital. Mm. So at the hospital, I, I attended every training. IT, whatever training would come, I was among the very first people to join, because I wanted to master this. Mm. And um, later she left her country and I continued working at the hospital. But then eventually my sister's life deteriorated and uh, she got very sick. Now even working at the hospital, I didn't have enough money to nurse her. Yeah. Um, so I had to leave the hospital and go back home, take care of my guardian, who is my sister, with the siblings. And um, so I came back home. And as I came back home, I was thinking about what to do. I inquired from friends, what can <coughs> I do? I didn't have a lot of savings, but I had some little money, at least that could do something. Mm. So I inquired from friends. I had option of um, a general merchandise shop, and then I also had uh, options of a mobile money. Money, yes. Um, mm. And then, Stop. Mm. then I was like, I have this skill. Eventually, my sister had bought a machine, and I, was, I, would, I would do some sewing, mm. not on a daily basis, but once in a while, mm. and I earned some money. 
So I was like, I think this is a good idea. Since I have the skills, mm -hmm. I should go back and polish them. Then I continue sewing. So circumstances pushed me into that space. Back to, mm. to, to, to tailoring. To tailoring. Mm. Yes. Mm. And uh, I started from home. Uh, because at this time, I was not ready to open up a shop. Mm. Besides, I didn't have the skills. I was into employment. I didn't know what it is. Okay. So um, I started from home, continued serving clients from home. Eventually, later, my sister passed on, and I took over the entire family. Wow. A friend of mine used to call it a clan. <laughs> he would ask me, how is your clan doing? Because in this family, there were children from different background, mm. but living in the same family. So my mm. when my sister deceased, I definitely had to take to over. take the responsibility. Mm. Exactly. So wow. um, I, I, I would uh, work on uh, my clients from home. But then it wasn't so convenient for them. Neither mm. was it convenient for me. Because you're, you're calling people home, it's home, and then it's business. Mm. At some point, they will come at any time when yep. they want. Mm. So I needed to separate, uh, uh, I want to separate business from family. Mm. And so eventually, um, while at the hospital, I had, I got a friend who was a, uh, a European expert, and he owned a jet. And so when I was talking about what I do... I like your choice of friends, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Own the jet. <laughs> yeah, as, as uh, you know, like, when he came to the hospital, I was working with him, and then I would talk about uh, what I do outside, you know, the hospital. Yeah. Mm. And then he picked interest. He was like, well, I'll be flying from um, Uganda to mm. Brussels. Yeah. I need a canopy for my jet, because it will be flying at a high speed and mm. uh, higher. So... It will be near the sun. I need something to reflect the sun. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had to get into research, find out what can I use that reflects the sun. Eventually, I came up with a canopy. I made one. Remy flew from Uganda to Brussels. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he reached the other side, he never forgot about me. Mm. One evening, they were in a dinner. He met another friend who was from Uganda. He said, there's a lady called Jackie. I had shared with him about... Uh, my journey mm -hmm. and the challenges and so I told him I'm leaving the hospital and those were still your early days exactly mm. yes okay mm. so mm. Um, Remy sent me some money and at this time I needed to leave home rent a room when I got this money it was an opportunity mm. Yes, I had uh, my own sewing machine and then also had my sister's sewing machine both domestic Mm. So this time, when I got the money, I went to the market. And Let's quite hold it there, Jackie. Charles, I see a story of uh, a lot of self-confidence here. Yeah. I'm just imagining how many graduates, mm. now talking about graduates, people with degrees, mm. would actually reach out and make such kinds of friends. But yeah. what are your key... Yeah. Uh, refined learnings we can share with our viewers at that point yeah. before Jackie comes back. I think one of the things you see from Jackie is that one, she wanted to be of service mm. to anybody. She saw herself not liking the tailoring mm. vocation but still said let me get into the hospital and when I'm there I need to merit being in the hospital. She didn't have to go there and say, you see I'm here but I'm not even educated and I want somebody to help me. Please allow me to be here and come and earn a salary. Mm. She goes to the hospital to work to make sure that whoever took her there mm. does not have to be the one to defend her. Mm. And that's a key learning for anybody who is looking for a job. Whichever job comes your way, do your very best until the person you put you there does not have to come again and say, please, make sure this lady is kept in this job because she has no salary, no income, no whatever. That's number one. Number two, a big challenge hits them. Mm. Your benefactor, the person who brought you to Kampala, the person who has been trying to look after you, has fallen sick. Mm. You could have just said, well, it is God's design. I think let her proceed in that direction. I have a life to lead. Mm. She disrupts her own bread and income to come home. Mm. 
But when she comes home, she does not say, you know what, I think destiny is such that we are supposed to be suffering here. This even, is my even, yeah, even my own elder sister is now here in lying in bed, mm. and I'm also here struggling with all these kids all over here. Mm. She says, what do I do as I look after my sick sister here? Mm. And I need to bring income to make sure that we are relevant. Along the way, mm. her spirit of a desire to be of value connects her to this somebody who is looking for a canopy. Mm. And she's saying, I'm a tailor, mm. a canopy. Let me try and do something I've never done before. Mm. Because very many tailors will tell you they have never even heard of the word canopy. I mean, <laughs> I'm just imagining. If someone came and walked to a tailor yes. and said they want mm. a, a canopy or some mm. material for jet, yes. I think they will just direct <laughs> them to the next... Uh, <laughs> they just say, please, <laughs> you move somewhere. This, I, I don't deal in those kind of things. Mm. But do you know what she said in the beginning? She was a bright, brilliant girl. Mm. School fees was a big problem. The family was too large. Gifted, mm. intelligent. Normally when you are gifted and intelligent and you do not wear a positive attitude, you go to a very negative yeah. outlook to life. Yeah. And just say, how could it be? I was brighter than that person. I was brighter than so and so. They have continued. They have left me behind. Mm. She was positive. That positivity has a way of making heavenly forces to converge on you. Very good. It is just a given. Mm -hmm. Wear a positive attitude. That is how some of these opportunities have come her way. Now, she gets opportunity to do a canopy. Most likely, she even didn't know how to price it. That's mm -hmm. a very good job. And the person says, my jet reached Brussels with a canopy from this young girl. Mm -hmm. And then the young girl is saying, I'm here trying to battle now to proceed to feed our family. Mm -hmm. My sister is dying. Mm -hmm. And money is sent. In other words, the journey of success is a journey with all turns mm. and all types of meandering. Mm. If you do not allow the dark spots to become your focus, there is a silver lining always somewhere. I hear you. Loud and that clear. window will open. Very good. Now, um, viewers, you can be part of this discussion. Um, I'm going to ask my producer to run that number, the WhatsApp number on the screen. Um, we'd like to hear your comments and questions. Uh, any question you have for Jackie, Jackie is here, and Charles to answer you and respond to all those issues you're raising. And so I think there were also some pictures yeah. about what she does. Exactly. It can also be displayed. Exactly. So I'm going to ask my producer at a certain point also to roll those pictures so that you see what Jackie does. So Jackie, you get that injection, that capital mm -hmm. from uh, this gentleman. What happens? Wow, I was good to fly. Mm -hmm. And so I carried my two sewing machines into a shop in Bugalovi. It's in Golovi Market, shop number 12Z. That's where I started, deep inside. Okay. And uh, so it was affordable mm -hmm. at that time mm -hmm. and comfortable enough to serve the clients I had at that moment. And um, from 2006 to 2012, it was a bit challenging. I would make money. I would feed the family. I would pay rent. But I wasn't seeing the business growing. And I had no one to learn from. I would come every day, the same thing. I work, I earn. But then I didn't see, I wasn't comfortable with the way the business was doing. Well, I didn't know much about business because mm. I didn't have business skills. Mm. But then I wasn't really comfortable and had this zeal and a desire to grow. But I didn't know how to do it. Mm. And so eventually I had over the radio, there was a, an advert about Enterprise Uganda training. But then... We were about five youth, and so we thought about uh, borrowing. There was youth venture, venture capital mm. by then. And so uh, they said for us to borrow, we must have financial literacy. Yeah. We must have mm. gone through business training. Mm. And so we're like, okay, now we're alert. Where do we go? <laughs> and then you hear this <laughs> advert. Then we hear this advert. <laughs> <Okay>. So <laughs> we're good to go. But yes. we were five. Mm. Two of us went. Yeah. The rest never showed up. Mm. And day one, now, sparing five days, five working days in a training as a business person mm. was the hardest thing. But I had to sacrifice because I had a need. So I went for Enterprise Uganda best training. Mm. Day one, I started disliking the, the, the loan. Day two, day three, by day five. I did not want to associate myself with the other five, mm. the other four. I did not want to borrow any money. 
I realized that I had what it takes to grow this business. Mm. And without borrowing the money. Without borrowing the money. I didn't need the money. Mm. I thought before that I needed the money, but after the training, I realized <laughs> I had what it takes. I only needed to polish what I have mm. so that I had capital already. Mm. So I came back to my business and started paying attention to each and everything I learned about from Enterprise Uganda. And uh, during that time is when I, uh, there was also another opportunity of uh, business administ administration training. Mm. I went for it. Before, I could not realize that there is a need of business administration training. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I was just mm -hmm. running a business waiting mm -hmm. for customers. Mm -hmm. No skills, no marketing skills, no sell sales skills. As in, I'm just in business. I'm you waiting for whoever choose to come. You are moving in auto, <laughs> like they say. <laughs> exactly, so, um, yes. This training you get from yes, Enterprise please. Uganda, the yes. best mm. uh, training. Um, I think Charles will give us a mm. brief about best. But what were the key learnings? What did you pick, you know, um, from that training? Uh, you know, that set you on that pace now to become a different kind of entrepreneur? You know, when you start business, you want to do everything. Yeah. And this time, I learned about record keeping. Mm. Not only financial, but all records. And then look at products that are bringing in more money than others. Yeah. So I had to make a choice of what I am going to measure in. And then I also learned about customer care. And then timelines. And then... Uh, look at uh, the place, the, 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 the location. The location of your business. The location was hidden, Charles. It was hidden. If you go to 12Z, it's just inside <laughs> in a corner. <laughs> Up to today, it is still there. I hear you. I, I do not own it because yes. I was renting and I left. Yes. But it is still there. But for someone to come all the way from where they have come from, mm. look for you in that corner. Mm they really must be knowing you. Yeah, and liking you too much as mm. well. Because exactly. there must have been other tailors around the area. Before mm. me. Mm. You climb the stairs, before you get to me, there are about six tailors. So what are they looking for in the corner? Yeah. <laughs> no customer care. Mm. You, you, you're green about it. You're just waiting for whoever comes in. And then another thing is, you're waiting for whoever walks in for business. Mm. You don't have a choice of customers. Whoever comes in, you're ready. You're busy with people that are not adding you up. Yes. You do every repair. Mm. Mm. So mm. at this time, when I took, when I, when in, I, in Uganda they call it biraka. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. That was the only opportunity that you would get <laughs> yes. the biraka but people. But even now, I still do biraka. I hear you. I still do biraka, mm. but very, uh, they have mm. value attached. Mm. Yes. Value, bi value de biraka. Yes. yes. Not the other one. Whoever comes, you have a heap of clothes <laughs> and they don't amount to anything. Yes. But this time, I will do one chiraka, and yes. it's enough to cover up about. 30 clients I the other you. time. I get yes. you. So I, s I love Biraka. I mm. learned from them. Because okay. you see, we have schools here, but uh, schools abroad are more advanced. Mm -hmm. So I learned, if you bring your jacket, I will not do anything before I check how the design is done and where will I get your, your jacket. Yeah. You have traveled, you have bought a, a, a designer jacket. Mm. So when you bring it to me, I do not run to make the Chiraka. Yeah. No, I first check. How did they do this? Mm. How did they do this? How is this done? Mm. Okay, now I add, because I keep planning on a daily basis. I get you. In fashion, if you stop planning, you're finished. You're cooked. Mm. Jackie, so um, where are you now? Because now I see you get this training, you mm. start on the mm. journey to transform yourself, mm. build uh, the business that you've built today. Yeah. I'm sure our viewers now mm. really are dying to know where are you in terms of business. Right now, um, after this training, I was able to cite more opportunities. Mm. People would come to me for training and I would tell them, no, I don't have time, much as I had time, but I, I feared mm. competitors. I was like, I trained someone who's going to take over from me the next day, yeah. so mm. I will not. Mm. I had closed that door. Mm. But then this time I opened that door, I started training from the same place where I was. Yeah. And so that's how the idea of vocational <coughs> training came in. There were people, there was a need of people wanted to be trained, but I would close it because I want to keep doing the work. But I'm one person. Will I do work for no. 10 people? You get overwhelmed. So yes. I opened um, door. a door for training. And so I started training one by one. And this I realized now, this place is not uh, enough for us. Mm. So I separated training 
from tailoring business. Oh, okay. Now I got another strategic place, mm -hmm. which is now in front where everyone is able to see and uh, mm -hmm. where I can exhibit what I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in this place, I was only there for one year. Yeah. When I got to this place for one year, I was able to take off and go to the vocational institute where we are now. And so students kept coming, kept coming, until I now it was a little bit too much. Um, earlier I said I did not obtain the education I wanted to, yeah. I desired to obtain, so I could not become a principal. And so this time I was like, okay, this thing is growing, it's growing, it's becoming bigger and bigger. I have the experience, but then the ministry will need someone who is more educated than yeah. I am. Mm -hmm. I had to hire a principal. And, uh, <coughs> you know, I make friends. Mm. This time I had met uh, the, the director of uh, Namasua College of Commerce. Mm. I followed him. He shared his story and I was like, I won't let him go. Mm. And he was also willing to Could mentor you? me yes. as, uh, as, a, as a competitor because now I was in the line of starting the vocational institute. I did not lie him. I told him, you know what, Haji, I want to do, I want to start up a vocational institute. I went to him like three times and he said, Jackie, I'm too busy. I won't be able to handle. But let me give you my principal. He will. Mm. He's, he has more time than I am mm. because he's a very busy person. Mm. It takes me about a year to see him. I hear you. We can talk. But then he was very, very busy and he's still very, very busy. Mm. So he gave me his principal. I was relieved. Mm. And at this time, his principal was doing a master's degree at university mm. and he was willing and we walked a journey. We started in 20, 2015. 2015, our students scored A plus. Um, they, they sat for exams from Director of Industrial Training mm. and they scored A plus, B plus. So the exam is not from you alone, it is a national exam. exam. Exactly, mm. yes. Interesting. So they were measured at the national level. Yeah. And so they performed very, very well. And I was like, well, we are good to go. Yeah. We are good to <coughs> go. And so um, right now, I, I run a tailoring business. It is still running. Even during COVID, we are running very busy. Mm. I never slept any single day. I continued. We are very, very busy. Um, around April, we had, um, we had an order of about 5,500 masks. Okay in seven days and you know everyone was in a lockdown mm. my dear we had to shoot that target to be delivered in lira it was a challenge but well we took it up from kampala to lira and there were no cars moving i didn't have a sticker but masks had to be delivered in lira and it was possible i, hear you. I had to get up and make sure it happens mm -hmm. and so from that time we've been very busy now the garment industry is a little bit down. Mm. You have no one coming to you. Everyone fears you. Mm. We are in a lockdown. You mm. know, I also fear going to people because I don't know if they have COVID. Mm. And then now here we are. What do we do next? The school has closed. Students yeah. have gone home. Mm. So we actually have no business. Mm. And I'm like, okay, but there's this mask thing. And then I started approaching clients online, online, online. So here comes one client who booms me. It was a, it was a, it was a, an order of uh, eleven thousand masks. Masks. Wow. And we it was a stiff competition. Mm. There was another competitor, so I, I they managed to they they, sep they, they they divided it into two. I was like, well, I delivered before him. Hold and it then, there, yes. Jackie. Um, mm. We'll mm. pick it from there. Mm. Charles, mm. what do mm. we pick from you know this story? Um, I see resilience. Yeah. I see. You know, we always talk about the self-pity. Yes. Eh? Where yes. you have circumstances working against you and you're yeah. like, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, when this lady was ignorant about lack of business skills, mm. she didn't know that she was lacking anything. And that's something the viewers need to know. Mm. Many people think going into business just opening a shop. <laughs> and you think so long as the shop is open, why are, not, why are customers not pouring? Mm. There's that innocence where you even do not know what you don't know. Mm. That's where Jackie was. Yeah. And if it was not for the training that was announced, I, I remember that time, I think it was Saida Bomba, mm. who was the Minister of Finance, and she said, we are starting a youth venture capital fund, and it was $25 billion. Yeah. Uh, Youth should be from groups of five. Mm. 
to come and qualify for it. But before that, you need to have given us a certificate confirming that you have gone through mm. business training. Yes. Reluctantly, she comes for this training and discovers there are many errors she had been going through. And I want many people who are watching this to know that this is not just about Jackie. Mm. There are people who have run big schools, yeah. run big businesses, and they have ignored basics. The basics will catch up with you. Yeah. So that was one key thing that came out of the, 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 the lady's uh, journey. But also you can see, when she now said, I want to go into um, a vocational institute, she could see what you call the key success factors. In other words, if I go this route, won't I have a roadblock somewhere? Won't I have a roadblock somewhere? From the training that we normally give, we tell them that among the seven things that define a business mindset mm. is remaining a learner. Yeah. Learn every day. Learn about things that relate to your, your, your kind of a business. Now, she knew somebody who was having a vocational institute. Yeah. The fellow tells her, you know what, I'm a busy man. But since you've been so persistent, I'm giving you my principle. Many times, a principal may be more informed than even the owner of the, of the institute. Because he does true. the day-to-day -day running of the thing. She goes in there and begins to learn. And as she does that, the, the real test of what she had learned was her students had to sit for a national exam. Mm. And the results came with the A+. Plus, with I love some that, them, Charles. Because you know? if you recall, and I'm mm. sure our viewers who have been following this series, yeah. um, you remember our brother from Nakawa Market? Yes. The young man. Yes. He just saw the man with a lot of money in the pocket. Yes. And he thought, and he said, <laughs> I want this. I want to do what this man does. <laughs> Correct. Yes. And uh, of course, at the end of the day, he burnt his fingers. He, he di and then again, that was another sort of innocence. Yes. He just thought it was just having money and being in a car and mm. the money will come to you. Yeah. yeah. There are key success factors in everything you undertake to do. Mm. And that is a very fundament p fundamental part of our training. And thank God, anyway, mm. he... Mm. He, 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 he realized that he needed training. Yes. And uh, had to look out for you. Correct. Now, uh, talk about training. Uh, yeah. I have quite a number of people here, and yeah. I think we need to we'll keep repeating this. Yes. Asking me, how do we get into the Enterprise Uganda training? Yes. What does it take? Yeah. Where do we find you? So you yeah. can answer briefly that as yeah. Jackie prepares to take us from yeah. where she stopped. Yeah, because Jackie will now need to tell us later the kind of clients that she has, mm. the kind of staff numbers, the machines. Yes. Because we knew a Jackie who had two machines. Yes. Where did the, the institute come from? Come from. And but as she, she does <coughs> that, I will <coughs> actually request my producer to run some of the pictures of Jackie. Yes. As she tells us that. But yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to say this, that... Um, at Enterprise Uganda, these programs that we're sharing here, all the testimony givers have had a training from Enterprise Uganda. Mm -hmm. We have the kind of content and the practical delivery that cannot be available everywhere. And we have perfected it to deliver real impact and creating real business people. So quickly, one, the moment you see that the country is opening up in terms of schools, in terms of churches, in terms of mosques, rich enterprise Uganda. My telephone number will give it because I just don't mind. Even if you went on the internet, you'd get a Ochichi's telephone number. Mm. But it's 0772-699-808. But also you can reach Ochichi through email. Info at enterprise.co.ug mm. alternatively charles dot ochichi and ochichi is five letters o c i c i at enterprise.co.ug very good Thank you very much, Charles. <coughs> Viewers, as you can see on your screen, we are flashing some of the pictures of the products and the activities of uh, Jackie, um, those are some of what she, she does and that's a business I think she focused on during COVID, talking about uh, mm. looking for opportunities in a crisis. Exactly. Jackie. Yes, please. Yes. So you built this vocational institute? Yes. Mm. And uh, also 2012 after the training, I realized I needed to legalize the business. Before oh, yeah. I was just running a business, but this time I needed to formalize it. So I definitely formalized the business. And this gave me opportunity of competing mm. for bigger businesses. And so later, I now 
I would not serve everyone. Mm. So I had a target market this time. Mm. And so I targeted certain clients, not every ever, everyone that walks in. Mm. And so I have had, uh, I got this one. This was a, a bit challenging. And um, I, I went for a bid. And there was this international organization that um, released a bid. And there I am. And um, they have, a b as in they have a standard. You don't offer them anything. Mm. You don't offer them everything. And they're not in for feeling sorry for you. <laughs> You've got to compete, qualify, and, and measure up. And measure up. Mm. So failure to do that, you have no business. And so definitely here I was able to compete for such businesses mm. and have built clientele of quite a number of um, organizations. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and um, so after, after, after this, I was able to realize that I needed more machinery. I transformed a, a domestic workshop into an industrial workshop, mm. as, as in have faster machines running faster, work faster. Because mm. now I have a target, I have a client who needs work in 30 days, and this is over, there were about 3,000 items, so I had to industrialize the workshop. Mm. And then now, where do I put these other machines? to the training oh yeah. workshop. Mm. So now I own, um, I run a tailoring industry, and then I also have a vocational institute. Tailoring industry has about, um, about uh, 35 to 40 sewing machines. Mm. So I have workers running, we are now run 24 seven. Every day we must be running, we have two shifts running every day. During the day and the night. Exactly, yes. Now there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a line running right now. There's production going on. Thank you, Jackie. Viewers, on that note, um, we're going to take a very <coughs> short commercial break. When we come mm. back, I see quite a number of questions and comments for Jackie and Charles. Mm. Uh, the ones that you've sent through WhatsApp, um, they will be coming to them. As Jackie tells us, because we know business is not always a bed of roses. No. They say even a rose has thorns. Yes. Yeah? So we're going to see some <laughs> of those realities. <laughs> Mm. The challenges, you might call them, mm. that she's been able to contend with to be who she is. After this break. with a cool fantabulous sky view sky view go extreme sky view orange is a product of the reham family on the next episode today on the property show this week i'm going to be taking you through how to remodel your place using an accent wall we'll get in and see the wall moldings not very common in Uganda at the moment. A and this, particular one. This is one of our signatures at Rex. We always ensure that. What do you think would be causing Blocker to be trending right now? The solution we are bringing on the market. First and foremost, looking at the times we are in, being COVID, people are more of uh, digital at the moment. And now, join me every week and the entire team of The Property Show, where we give you the very best that we can in the real estate world. Welcome back, viewers. Again, uh, we are sharing the story of uh, Jackie. Jackie is um, a tailor. She has a garments uh, processing unit and a vocational institute. Now, um, Jackie, before we went to the break, you, you, you were talking about, of course, the hustle you had to go through to actually bid, compete, and fit the <coughs> bill, like mm. they say. 
Mm. And I think that is very, very important because, um, I mean, there are so many people who classify themselves as special groups. Yes. And they have expect special treatment yes. when some of these things mm. are mm. happening. Mm. What would you say to them, uh, I mean, based on your experience? Mm. Well, um, there, there's a client's expectations. Yeah. Mm. And they send for a bid. Mm. You make a sample. They do not mind about who you are. Mm. They mind about the sample. Does it <laughs> meet <laughs> the, 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 the expectations? expectations? Mm. So whether you, 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 you are no fan, whether you are a woman, whether you are what, all they need is the product. Mm. Mm. And remember, this was an international organization. They had chosen to give us, as locals here in Uganda, a business other than importing from abroad. Mm. So they were looking for a local here that can produce what they have been importing into the country so that they can uh, uh, ease services. <coughs> so um, I submitted the sample. It's measured with other people's samples and it passed the test. And now you have got to be awarded the certificate of supply. Mm. And then you must maintain the standard. There's nothing like there were, there, were, there were different colors of materials. Maybe the material <laughs> wasn't enough. Maybe I had to import. At this point, I had to import from uh, Spain. Mm. And I had to import exactly what I submitted. Yeah. You, su you, 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 you give a sample, and then in the store, you're delivering in a different store. This person doesn't know you. Where you delivered a sample, it's taken to the stores. This person has not seen you before. And mm -hmm. you must take mm -hmm. what exactly? These are uh, 3,000 items. Mm -hmm. They all must look the same. I hear you. So, but I had learned about uh, a ruthless game from Enterprise Uganda. Mm. That's a very good one. And mm. I, I want you to hold it there. Charles, mm. Mm. you know, mm. we have so many mm. <coughs> affirmative programs, even in business. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's where programs like Agoa come in and the yes. kind of yes. thing. Yes. And, and um, if you look at the trade relations, especially between our developing countries yeah. and the developed world, yeah. uh, most of our business people tend to always go into those markets through such windows of affirmative. Very true. Very true. Very and, true. And, and from what I pick from Jackie here is yeah. you can actually compete. Yes. True. Yes. Give good quality. Very true. Yes. And uh, Jackie's story is such a beautiful reassurance to all Ugandans that we can actually fit anywhere. Mm. Here is how affirmative action came into her story. They said, we've been importing high quality items that we want from abroad. Mm. Why can't we give a chance also to the locals? Yeah. But before we give a chance to a local, we want a certain minimum standard. So the window came in, which was affirmative, saying this is all for locals. Bring us 3,000 units. Mm -hmm but locals must come in. Mm. Now, here is the catch. Being a local is not where you go and say, you know, here is my birth certificate. Mm. I was born in Uganda. My mm. parents are all from this country, and mm. please take my items. Mm. They are simply saying, we want a solution that serves our expectations, and that solution must cover our needs. If you don't fulfill that, please go away. Yeah. We'll try another person, then mm. another one. If we don't get anybody who is able to do it within Uganda, we go back outside and then probably begin to build the capacity of, of the locals. Mm. In other words, I want Uganda to know that we will get a lot of affirmative opportunities. But if we do not measure up in terms of consistency, quality, commitment to the contract, mm. it's a wasted effort. The effort yeah, absolutely. And mm. we saw that a lot with Agoa. The president carrying things on his head mm. to try and demonstrate to the country that, you know what, the door has been opened for us to take our items to the mm. United States. Mm. Now, once that is signed as a paper, the consumers the other side will never say anything from you, Ghana, please eat it. No matter whether you see a worm in the pineapple, <laughs> remove the worm and eat the pineapple because yes. coming from a third world country, yes. it will not happen. Mm. Affirmative action is just a door opener. Mm. The real sweat must be gone Put through. In. Yes. Yes. That's a good one. That's a good one indeed. So, Jackie, um, mm. challenges, mm. Uh, of course, synonymous, synonymous with business. I mean, you can't do a business without uh, some of these challenges. Sometimes it is a smooth ride, sometimes bumpy. 
what are some of the challenges that you face in your business and how do you deal with them? What principles help you to ride the storms or, or, or the waves when they so happen in business? Challenges, some uh, human, source, human resource management, mm. datas, mm. then finances. Also, when you're developing, definitely you need, if you're taking a step, yeah. it requires more finances. Like the client I talked about, mm. I, it, it was some good money, but I had to supply at zero deposit. Mm. Payment is in 30 days after delivery. Yeah. You produce a delivery note, make an invoice of the total um, items ordered. <coughs> There's nothing that you'll supply 40 and then remain with the 60. Mm. There's nothing like you pay me this and you, you <coughs> deliver full <laughs> amount mm. and then you wait for 30 days to be paid. So you're investing 100%. Mm. So that is that was a little bit challenging. I hear you. And um, definitely here you also, you can't sell anything in a short time to raise finances. Mm. You can borrow from friends, but certain amount. Mm. But for business, it's it's been it, it was a little bit challenging for me. Mm. And definitely I had to run to Enterprise Uganda again. Now, Enterprise Ghana has become like a home for me, mm. where mm. I can run to at 7 a.m. and sit at the door, wait, <laughs> until... <laughs> <laughs> mm. Because, you know, there are challenges in, um, in, uh, in uh, businesses, day-to-day -day challenges. Yeah. There are very many. But this time, um, I had a financial challenge of, s of this supply, and I was awarded a certificate. Mm. I don't have the money. I ran to friends. Those who could give me money gave me, mm. but it was not enough. It wasn't enough. Then mm. what do I do? Now, this is the time I thought about borrowing. Where do I borrow from? Microfinance? Banks? Mm. I again had to run to Enterprise Uganda mm. and consult. What do I do? I have an LPO here. It is some good amount of money. These are the conditions. And then you discuss. At the mm. end of the day, I left Enterprise Uganda. Inter Enterprise Uganda with a solution. Mm. Went to the bank. At first, when I stepped in the bank, they, they asked me, where have you been? I've been in this bank for some time. Mm. But they were like, do you bank with us? Yes. Mm. Do you have an account? I have two accounts, savings and um, uh, uh, business account. Yeah. Mm. Uh, where are they? I showed them. They're like, have you been here? Have you ever borrowed before? No, I've not borrowed. And then somehow they are, th they are discussing, you don't know what exactly they are discussing, but somehow you are a threat. <laughs> I walked in the bank for, for a whole week. Mm. And not until I asked the, the loans administrator, I'm like, lady, what is happening here? Because I am missing out. I have 30 days to deliver. Yeah. I am running out of time. I have got to import. Mm. What do I do here? Mm. I, have, I am the sole supplier here. Mm. I am failing the company. Mm. The lady told me, Jackie, the bank fears you. Because you've not borrowed before and you need a lot of money. Yeah, a Your risky security customer. <laughs> 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 yes. Well, Your credit story was here. And yes. There. That was a very big challenge. Mm. And um, well, I managed to go through. Mm. I managed to get the loan. I didn't have uh, security worth what they needed. They, need, they needed 150% worth what I was borrowing. Okay. Mm. I didn't even have, I think, 10% mm. of what I was <coughs> borrowing. Mm. So, but eventually, they asked me to talk to the client if you, if they would allow to my customer mm. if they would allow pay me through the bank. Definitely, okay. it was very clear that the money would come through the account because the LPO was stating everything that was supposed to be done. And yes, yes I will get the money from the uh, through the account. But mm. they needed the other pa the, the, the my customer to mm. to, 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 to confirm. To confirm. Yes. that's what I, I was. Uh, that's what I was going to ask. <laughs> how yes. you manage to? Yes. Yes. I ran to the customer, mm. explained. I'm borrowing this much from the bank mm. to complete the supply. Mm. And um, so th they need your affirmation. They mm. need you to, to confirm that you pay me through the bank and even put the account name and the account number and everything. The client was uh, cooperated. The, the client cooperated and gave me the letter. 
I ran to the bank again. The bank has to go back and confirm that the letter is from the client <laughs> without my <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> yes. I learned this after, <laughs> yes, that, that they went back mm. to find out if the client has really <laughs> written, written that letter. And actually, in, five, in my file, I found a letter that the client signed. When they went with the letter, the client signed and stamped mm. that they have they confirmed. So <laughs> mm. this is how I was able to get the loan. That's a good one. Mm. And I and think it's a good experience. You see, yes, some of these yes, things you don't get yeah, from um, yeah, school, yeah, but from... Yeah, yeah. Yes. Now, Charles, what yeah. do we pick from mm. here? Before I bring in other questions as well from our viewers for yeah. you yeah. and Jackie. No, it's just a beautiful story. Mm. You know, when you talk about difficulty in getting finance, there's a way we quickly brush off banks. Yeah. But listening to this lady, you find a bank saying... We've never done business with you. Yeah. We want security, which is one and a half times our money. Mm. So that should we have to sell it at market price, I mean, in a hurry, because mm. we need our money back. And it's not our core business to sell yes, things. Mm. We should be ab able to get back our principal plus some of the interest we have not paid. That's yeah. why they talk about one and a half uh, times yes. of the, the loan amount. Of, of the loan, yes. Mm. Now, here is the story. There are many ways we bring out what I call a keyword in business, and that keyword is trust. Mm. This lady needed to be trusted by the banks by saying, please, should you take our money, you are going to do that job. You have the capability to do that job. And now, to get that trust to come in and becomes the collateral, they say, now the client you have is of repute. Can we get your client to write to us saying the money will come through our account? Mm -hmm. Because you seem to have been trusted by a client. Mm -hmm. No better way of confirming your capabilities than a good client, yes. which was na step number one. Mm -hmm. When the letter came through from the client saying, yes, we have given her a contract, yes. they still said, Ugandans, you never know. Somebody could easily forge a letter from a reputable international organization. Mm -hmm. They wrote to the customer, to the, to the client of who? Uh, Jackie, yeah. and got the assurance that yes, it has happened. Mm. To me now, I would be so glad to see when you did this first transaction with your bankers, yes. what is the relationship now between you and the bankers? Because now you took this money. Yes. How did it go? Definitely, I supplied in time. Mm -hmm. And when the money came in, I called the very lady who was scared of me. Mm -hmm. I called and I was like, you know what? They have <laughs> paid us. Mm. Please deduct your money. Mm. It took me about two, three days to go to the bank. Because now I was relieved, I knew the bank. She was like, have they paid? Give me the account number. Mm. I gave her the account number and they deducted the money. Mm -hmm. When I went back to pick my security, she said, uh, first wait, do you need some more money? Mm. Look at that. I hear you. Look at that. Get more business, <coughs> we give you more money. Mm. I was like, not for now. Let me first go and look for business. And later, I definitely got another business. When I went to the bank this time, I was now seated and they are running. We need to process this money so fast. <laughs> this client <laughs> needs money so fast. She has to supply in this time. Of, as in they were the ones now talking. Doing the running around and Correct. probably we're having a cup of tea or coffee. Yes. No, um, yes. <laughs> very good story, um, <laughs> viewers. And I'm sure we're picking lessons here. Mm. She has told us the story from her humble beginnings, quite turbulent at the start, to where, you know, she sits today or at that point yes now um i have someone this is you know i have uh, our viewers are really really um blazing here yes uh, they want some questions answered yes mm -hmm. and i have uh, jackie here she says i have a challenge of getting ideas mm. and they die on the way before i even start mm. Because I have less capital, yes, I, yet I like bigger business ideas. Of recent, I bought a popcorn machine, but I'm still reluctant to start this business. Did you, she's wondering, did you also go through the same? Mm -hmm. uh, well, those ideas will come. But one thing I know, that uh, when you're starting something, you must be passionate about it. Yeah. You may not know how to do it. But if you're passionate about it, you will start Capital you already have, because you have the idea, it's your capital. Whether you know how to do it, like how I didn't know how to do it, but I started mm -hmm. with my two sewing machines that mm -hmm. I had mm -hmm. at home mm -hmm. in the house. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they were able to make some money. Mm -hmm. They sustained us for some time. Mm -hmm. So um, you don't wait to start, you start. Mm. I hear you. 
Then I have someone here again saying, mm. good networking helped Jackie sharing her life journey built her social capital. I think that really that comes out it, in it her did, story. It, mm. it did, it did, it did come out, yeah. Charles, I have yeah. Bernard here is wondering. Yeah. Um, he's interested. Mm. I, it's a bit of, uh, anyway, it, d it depends on how you look at his question. Mm. He wants to know the principles of success. Okay. Yes. You know, principles of success, first of all, just speaking from the story of Jackie. Initially, the bank didn't want to deal with her. Mm. They were happy to receive her deposits, mm. but not to give her their money mm. without having one and a half times security yeah. for her to take bank money. Mm. If you just look at that one and just look at how did the success come about, mm. it came about because of a short word called trust. No matter what you do, deliver trust. And trust is delivered from two key elements. Mm. Competencies to deliver a working solution. Mm. The client of Jackie is saying, bring me a sample. Yeah. Number two, show me that you can deliver my sample in 30 days. Number three, I'm not going to give you a deposit. Mm. You must be competent to fulfill those. Mm competence is part of the trust equation yeah. but number two is integrity whatever i've said i stand by it i brought you a sample it's from me i'm committing to do this thing in 30 days but within the 30 days also i'm looking for a loan but i'll still deliver mm. the solution in 30 days mm. you can't start running back to the client and say you know what mr client i can't do this in 30 days mm. but for the last two weeks I was looking for capital. Mm. Can you give me another two weeks? Mm. Nobody wants to hear that. Mm -hmm. So there are two things that, um, okay, three things that I wanted to just under underscore for a word that is so central in creating success. Yeah. The central word is trust. But as you work on trust, deliver solutions that make people happy and love you. And that means you must look beyond just the money today. When she was struggling to fulfill that contract, she just wanted to make sure that even if she got the money with interest and ate up most of her income, she still wanted to bring that happiness, which says, I serve the customer happily. Mm. If you serve a customer and a customer is happy, what happens next? He comes back, call that one, repeat business. Next, it becomes part of your profile. Mm. Thirdly, they refer you to other people. Yeah. All these are elements of success. I hear you. But success, you don't announce it. You don't just say, I come from a certain family of do so and so, so I must be a success person. Mm. Never. Which actually ties in the question here Akiza is asking. Yeah. One mm. is wondering, does Enterprise Uganda have online training? Yeah. But then two, can elites, those who studied EG up to masters attend, this training because <laughs> most of the stories <laughs> seem to be from those yes. who had a, dis a disadvantage <laughs> first. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, and viewers, please don't mind if you repeat some of these questions and you miss some of our earlier sessions, don't mind. Just mm. keep talking to us. Mm. When we brought in the story of Alex, some thought, oh my God, this is an elite. Yeah. Alex is having, is it two degrees or yes. the, the, the dad had two degrees? The dad had two the degrees, but he's an engineer. He's an engineer. Yes. And Alex himself was, you know, from a family that was a bit okay. And yeah. people were saying, but no, but that fellow is from mm. a fairly mm. well-to-do family. He was born with a silver spoon, yes. as they say. So here is the message. Mm. Success does not know the papers you have. Yeah. Success is simply saying, what solutions are you delivering to the market? Mm. When you come to Enterprise Uganda, we're not bothered about whether you went to school and got the best grades, we're not bothered about whether nobody likes your tribe or your language or your religion. We're only simply saying that you're a human being and you want to deliver solutions. Mm. We take you through the basic principles on how that is done. Mm. And if you don't follow those principles, it's a must. It's a matter of time. And evidence is everywhere where we've had great stories, great runs, and then finally, because you forgot these principles, you come down. Mm. So please, as you come to Enterprise Uganda, you'll discover within the first day out of five days that your education may have been good. It doesn't really matter. Mm. We're going to give you the principles that keep you in the market. And to be in the market takes the following two things. Number one, sell a solution that a customer loves because it meets the expectations. Mm. And as you heard from Jackie, Jackie could not go and start saying, you know, 
I even didn't finish my proper education and I became a caretaker of our family too early. Please, international organization, buy from me. I have so many children to look after. Nobody is bothered. Sell a solution that meets expectations of the customer. We are not asking for your degree. We are not asking for whom you know. We are only saying where is the solution. But that solution should be consistent. That solution should be timely. Mm. Number two, be ready to compete. Jackie is being opened. They said, no, this deal here, this bid is for locals. And they didn't say locals, but if possible, it should be a, a lady who didn't finish university. Mm. And if possible, she should be somebody who suffered in the beginning. They simply said, we want this solution delivered. Yeah. Delivered, full stop. Mm -hmm. So I want to get Ugandans to know that never, ever abandon these Sunday opportunities. We are bringing people of all levels of education. Mm. The very highly educated, the least educated. Mm. Watch next week. We are going to a deep part of Busoga. I, I, I remember another interesting Exactly. Exposure. I remember the story. You know, I mm. think it was our second show when we had yeah. uh, Aga Sekarala Jr. here. Exactly. And uh, Patricia. Patricia. Very refined people. Extremely people you can put anywhere in any conference hall. Yes. And they will be able to speak at international platform, mm -hmm. but also doing business with any other person who may never have gone to a university, and they would put up the same kind of level of competition. Perfect. But Perfect. the family of the Sekalalas are people who have refined their credentials, mm. both academically, mm. but also business-wise. Good point. So, um, please, Ugandans, when the country is opened, head to Enterprise Uganda. Mm. We deliver solutions that work. We do deliver solutions that keep you in the private sector. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Jackie, I have someone from Hash Suits here. He's yeah. saying he's a tailor, uh, but would like to start up a tailoring company. I think she's, he's a normal tailor. Sandy Wachala, normal. Mm. So he wants to up the game. Mm. Um, he's saying, how do I do it from your experience? What kind of advice would you give such a person? Um, you already have the skills. You already know how to sew. Start. Because you can never gain experience mm. by having an idea. Mm. You mm. want to start a tailoring business. You have already learned, you have already got tailoring skills. Start with what you have. Mm -hmm. What you have is more than enough. You don't need a hundred machines. You realize that I have walked a journey. Mm. Even the two machines, I would not use them at the same time. I would still use one. But if you're not practicing, you will not learn. If I mm. wasn't practicing, I would not get uh, these opportunities of training. Mm. Mm. Some people talk about capital to start the business. Mm. You can start from where you are. Back at the institute, I'm a mentor. From 2014 up to today, mm. I've been mentoring uh, people into tailoring. I meant uh, under mentorship program, I have three to five months. Now, this is not the formal training. Mm. It's the mentoring program. You want to learn how to sew? Some actually have been to vocational schools, mm. but they have not acquired the skills. So and you handhold them, literally? I c they come to me, and they already know how to sew. They have the theory, but they don't have the practical bit. Mm. Mm. So I take them through. I give you <coughs> five months. After mm. five months, you're good to go. Mm. Maybe she needs to identify um, uh, a workshop mm. where she can walk along a mentor. I hear you. Thank you, Jackie. Mm. Now, I have Victoria here. Charles, I think you can jump in on this one as well. Mm. It's saying, thanks for the program. Advise me, I've been running a retail shop for eight years, but have not expanded. Why did I go wrong? Interesting. Uh, the first thing I will tell today, what's the name of the lady? Victoria. Victoria. Victoria needs to know that if you've been running a retail shop, the following thing has been happening. You had certain capital that put the stocks in the shop. Now, that capital ideally should never go down the next day. Mm. In other words, you had stocked bread worth a million shillings today. You took the bread to the shop. People have bought the bread and you have earned from the sales 1.4 million shillings. Mm. Remove the 1 million, which is the capital that brought in the bread. Yeah. Now, that 1 million there should never be part of your 
allocation for utilization as a budget for home use. Mm. That one million, keep it aside, then go back to the 400. And I'm assuming the 400 means that um, you have paid all the other expenses. Now there's a net profit of 400,000. Mm. That 400,000, if you want to show that you are beginning to grow, mm. pull out a portion of that, ideally 50%. You had the story of the young man at Twib yeah. from Nakawa. Yeah. He learned this principle and he said, if you do this principle, mm. as the sun rises from the east and sets in the west every day, yeah. you must begin to grow. Mm. The 400,000, pick 200 of that, put it back to the 1.2. Your new capital is no longer 1 million. It's 1.2. Mm. The kind of bread you are going to order this time will not be the volume of the one million, it will be bigger. That's right. Now, when you make that sale, the sale will give you 1.7 or 1.7 million. Now that you have, because the, the capital went from 1 million to 1.2. With the 1.7 means you have had a profit of 700,000 this time. Mm. Or you move from 1.2 to 1.7, that means 500,000. On this 500,000, first keep away the 1.2 million, which is the new capital. Mm. Go back to the profit of 500,000, remove half of it, put back to the 1.2. 250 plus 1.2 is 1.45 million. The business is beginning to grow. Victoria needs to come back to Enterprise Uganda. When we are talking of the seven business mindsets on how to create an entrepreneur, this one that generates organic or internal growth is an integral part of the list. If you do not see this, you are not an entrepreneur. Every day you are destroying capital. And there are enough reasons for you to say, you know what, I had a sick child. Oh, I had a neighbor who was in need of this. I had a relative who wanted this and this. Oh, the other day there was a problem for me to fix. Those things are endless. Mm. But if you do not see organic growth, no matter whether you are at the level of a billion, 10 billion, 7 billion, whatever the, the, the figure, Organic growth must come out. Last month must be smaller than this month. The next month must be bigger than the, the previous, previous month. month. Mm. And like that, non-stop. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, the store of Nakumat is clear. <laughs> it is, without a you doubt. Nakumat became a 1.4 trillion business, mm. but it began to eat, eat into itself. The expenses they were using to try and create this kind of outlets were too large and we begin to eat into this enterprise uh, empire. Mm. 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 No matter how large you are, if there is no organic growth, ask anybody who has collapsed, do a post-mortem. You'll find that one of the things they did was they started to eat all the profits and they justified why they were eating all the profits. <laughs> and then they also- There will always be reasons. Yes, and mm. then they also started to erode the capital. Mm. You walk that route, you must go. It's a must, you must go. Thank you, Charles. Mm. Jackie, um, as we come to the tail end of our interface, you know, most of our businesses are family businesses. Somehow it's hard. You know, that question keeps coming, Charles. It does. Um, <coughs> you find yourself in a situation where you have to employ relatives or have some of your family members as part of your business. Mm. Um, it's a tough balance. How do you deal with that? Well, I have I had a challenge also before, mm. but then I have been attending trains at Enterprise Uganda. They have different different trainings. Uh, we have business clinics every Thursday. It's not happening because of COVID, but I never missed. I never missed, and this is how I learned how to deal with uh, relatives in business. Mm. Of course, before I hit, I burnt myself. Mm. One came into the business, was a cousin. He stole a lot of money for, from a client. Well, he made a receipt and he, he disappeared up to tomorrow. Mm -hmm. He's there. Mm -hmm. We are from mm -hmm. the same family. Mm -hmm. I know him, he knows me. We have actually <laughs> met even after. Mm -hmm. But what can I do? I hear <laughs> but then from this experience, I learned that business is separate from Jackie. If you are a relative, you come into the business, you have come to add value into the business, mm. not to be babysitted in the business. So the business has its own principles and systems. They have to bring some value. Exactly. Very powerful. If there is a, if there is a, uh, if there is a place for you, you mm. will come in. If it's mm. not there, then what do, where do I put you? Mm -hmm. So 
The business is separated from Jackie. It has its own employees, it pays its, its employees. So you don't come in because you are a relative. No, because I'm also empl at some point I'm also an employee there. Mm. Very good. What would be your last word, Jackie? Lord, or pointing us in the future as well? Well, um, I have walked a journey and I feel at this point I would want to expand. I have so far acquired land for the institution and I've acquired land for my home, for my, retire my retirement home. And um, I think in the next 10 years, I will have, I will have a fully fledged institute. And it will keep growing because I'm looking at a university. Mm. We so far have fashion designing universities here. But I, I, I am not limited to this. Mm. So I'm looking at um, a fully fledged institute in a better environment away from Kampala. Yeah. And I've already acquired the uh, land. And um, then I also look forward to retiring and leave the, the business out to grow me. I want to watch the business move on. Mm. Mm. I want to watch the business grow. Because I started it out of, uh, of a challenge, but then now it's employing. It's employing about 45 employees. Mm. It has equipment. It has a client, so it can move on its own. And so in 10 years from now, I will have established um, a campus. Thank you very much, Jackie. Almost very, very inspirational story. Charles. Yeah. Your wrap up, and as, and as you're doing that, I yeah. have 110 questions. Yeah. People asking me, how do we yeah. uh, join the programs of Enterprise Uganda? Yeah. What does it take? Very good. I think the first one is to first give um, comfort to every person who is viewing this program to recognize that no matter how humble the stories that we are sharing here, the thing that we have been seeing about private sector is that the elite, the educated, had always consigned the private sector to failures. Mm. They had always thought so. Mm. So, but now things have totally changed. If you do not begin to have your resources that you are coming from a salary, yeah. getting them saved and invested, you are destined to a very bad, tough ending. And that's a need even for you to wait until retirement. Mm. Because today, right now you are seeing elections going on. How many people who were having jobs in parliament the last five years are going to be back having jobs in parliament? Mm. How many people who were having jobs in a certain banking sector and in the next three, four, five years, those jobs will still be there. Mm. Jobs are getting more and more difficult. The route that remains steadfast, available for all of us, is the private sector. Mm. And it never gets full. There is always room for the next entrant. Mm. But the rules remain the same. Sell a solution that meets expectations. Be ready to compete. And it remains open forever. So my message is that, yes, Enterprise Uganda is your institution of repute. It has been tested. Every person we bring here has benefited from the different components of training that Enterprise Uganda delivers. Those trainings remain available to all of us. Please, at the earliest opportunity, yourself or a relative you have, send them to Enterprise Uganda and let us build our country the way the people you have been hearing here a building Uganda. Thank you very much, Charles. Mm. And thank you, Jackie. Very powerful story there. Viewers, that brings us to the end of this week's edition of the Practical Business Steps, uh, of course, brought to you by Enterprise Uganda. And we're trying to make this as practical as possible and easy for you to follow as possible. Picking it from the people that have been there and are still there. And then that is in terms of doing the business and mentoring those that sit within the business space. I've been your host, Charles Boji. Until next time, have a good evening.
TV, turning on your world.